And good morning. Welcome good to morning. Plastic Surgery 90210. Happy Taco Tuesday, by the way. Taco Tuesday. Taco you gonna get Tuesday. your you gonna get your tacos in today? Absolutely. All right. <laughs> so today we're honored to have Dr. Rivkin with us, who's a head and neck surgeon who specializes in non-surgical aesthetic procedures. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Well, it depends on how far back you want to go. <laughs> Let's go back to training. All right. Yeah, where or where are you from? So, and where'd you go? So training was in San Diego. Okay. And I came to LA and I saw all these great, you know, non surgical procedures started it was in two thousand and two thousand and three, I think uh -huh. it was, and that was just at the beginning of this interesting field that that I, that we are that we're in. And um, Botox and all these things started getting FDA approved. Right. And I thought, boy, this is this is much more interesting than ET. Right. <laughs> I'd right. do this. So I started doing non-surgical procedures and just opened an office and just and um, and it's been it's been pretty cool. Great. And then what I was just like a year in, as these fillers are being approved, I thought, gosh, you know, I could do what I want. I could get the kind of results that I would want with s surgical rhinoplasty using a filler, and that was that was pretty pretty cool and like surely Very somebody's cool. thought of this and and there was nothing there's no wow wow and so we started started doing this went to tv and said you know I, I can do this yeah and they said really okay we'll put a camera in your office <laughs> cool <laughs> <Okay>. cool <laughs> so it was pretty so it was nice and now it's there's a lot of so m my main focus now is um non-surgical rhinoplasty and then you know all the anything facial sculpting all that kind of stuff but the most recent focus for me it's kind of in an effort to give back uh, self-harm scars and now this most recent thought which is including aesthetic treatments in the addiction recovery process which I think it's really interesting yeah um, sort of like a part of the rehabilitation of patients who have harmed themselves. Yeah, yeah. And, and well, harmed themselves and also, well, you know, yeah, exactly, physically mm -hmm. as well as chemically. emotionally. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. There's a show on HBO mm -hmm. a, a while ago. I think it was called Lie to Me or something like that. Okay. And it had three couples, and one of the couple, the younger couple, the woman of the younger couple was this actress. It's just really, really, really pretty woman and I thought it was I thought it was a great show and then suddenly in comes this actress into my office and we do you know little things here and there at this point we have a relationship where right. it's, she's you know we kind of sh I see her oh hey Michelle how's it going mm -hmm. you know and we develop a sort of a, a trust and, mm -hmm. and a relationship and several years you know into this she turns to me and she says hey can you shut the door and I said okay sure <laughs> so I close the door. Now it gets interesting. Yeah, now it gets yeah. interesting. So I close the door, and she said, "I have a request for you about something that I, I, I don't talk about, but I'm thinking that maybe you can help me." And so I said, "Yeah, sure." So she, she peels her back, mm. her wrists. Yeah. And she has these obvious scars on right. uh, self-harm scars, like serious self-harm scars <clears throat> coming across her wrist and indented mm, okay. and she says and so she says to me look we've been doing fillers we've been doing botox you know and it's been really great and right I was thinking that this is something that has impacted my life in a profound way sure that every sure. time i go for auditions every time mm. i have a date every time i see people I feel like they're looking at my wrists, that they're making mm. judgments about me based upon sure. you know, the appearance of these scars. Sure. Um, she said, what do you think about putting some filler into there and camouflaging them? And she said, I can't really camouflage them because they're indented. Sure. And whatever and makeup. Sure, and whatever, in, yeah. You know, whatever color you do, yeah. And so she said, well, if they were filled, I think I could do that better. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, so I said, well, um, I don't know. I've sure. Never, I've never tried this before. Sure. I always think it's amazing in medicine and surgery, a lot of our answers come from patients. Very much so. Patients come to their doctors, surgeons, whatever, and say, you know, can you try this? And we may not have even thought about it. And then all of a sudden it's like, yeah, yeah. why not? Why not? That's all right. True. So you filled it and yeah. And it's just, <clears throat> and I filled it and she was 
and it looked good. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was great. Cool. And she cool. was, I mean, she was in tears after it was such an emotional moment for her. Sure. And then she said, you know, you don't, you don't understand how prevalent this is in LA. And I, yeah. I had no idea. I have no idea. And yeah. I had no idea at the time of what, um, I mean, I have a little bit of better idea now, but having seen a lot of patients with this kind of thing, but self harm scars and, and, and not even necessarily the one, the people that I, that I see for it are not, you know, wrist kind of suicide attempts like, like, like her. Um, but, uh, it's just, it's so prevalent. Wow. That's it's amazing. So, so prevalent. We did that. And then she said, I would love to be involved in an effort to help people. Mm -hmm. And I said, I, Sure. Sign me up. Sign That's me. what we do. I yeah. mean, it's yeah. just, it's such an easy thing for me to do. Sure. It takes nothing for me and it really has such an impact. You know, mm -hmm. why, why would I not, not want to sure. do that? Sure. And so we did, we, we started this kind of website and stuff like that. It's mm, called cool. Roll Up Your Sleeves. Cool. That was her yeah. kind of, yeah. and we went on, I mean, we went to People Magazine, we went to like, cool. and we got some good stories out of it uh -huh. to prom to sort of get the word out sure. that this kind of thing exists right. and is possible to do. Because most, the issue is that they don't know. They you have know? no idea. Right. And they think that they're just cursed and, yeah. and, and this, they have to live with this for, you know, forever. So that was really cool. Um, and we still get patients uh, who come in for that, and we do it for you know for for people who um, for people who financially qualify. We don't charge them, and it's 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 fine. It's just such a not not a big yeah. deal for us, but it's such a big deal for these sure. guys. I wish we could do. I wish we could do more. Sure. Unfortunately, with some of these, as you know, with some of these patients with the self harm scars that have matured that are white, mm -hmm. there's not a lot that I can do. Sure. Um, but so that, that's been good. And we, um, contacted some of my friends around the country. So, oh, we need someone in New York. Oh, well, well let's go with this person, DC, this person, cool. Texas. And so we have, you know, a, network. a small network mm -hmm. of people that are, you know, that, that will see people that, you know, people with, with self-harm scars. And I think that's nice. Yeah, that's great. That's good. So with scars, there can be raised scars. So if you have a raised scar, what are you going to do for a raised scar? So the scars, yeah. So I can treat raised scars. With steroids seem to work fairly well. And it okay. depends on the, on the person, depends on the scars. To, right. You know, what what percentage of Kenalog does a good job. But I, I find that combining with 5-FU, uh -huh. and it seems to work Pretty well, but you need probably a couple of injections. You need a couple of sessions, and yeah. sometimes it, le it, it sometimes it leaves some erythema behind. Okay, and redness. Yeah, yeah, some redness behind, and I have to treat that with a laser. And so some okay. of the lasers that are specific that are specific for uh, for redness work very well. The vascular okay. lasers. Okay, um, and that's so that's nice. Um, sometimes the scars are indented. Yes, so you can have a raised scar. And then you can have the reverse, where it's indented. So for if, if it's indented, what so do you if like? If it's indented, I, I can. That's easy. We can do that with fillers. Now the interesting thing is that I see Michelle every once in a while, mm -hmm. and her, her she's fine. Like cool. I did this once with temporary filler. Okay. I've had to zero refills what's over her, years. What, what's your favorite filler for those types of scars? That's a good question. Um, depends on. Yeah, it really depends. Yeah. It really depends. I want something that is, yeah, it really depends on how much I have to lift sure. versus how much, how much I want to concentrate on lifting tissue versus how much I want to concentrate on having as, um, as smooth a result as possible. So sure. if it's shallow and I want to, as, and I'm more worried about smoothness, you know, I'll pick something more smooth. Like Jupiter maybe, Velour is nice where it's like, it's, it doesn't, it, it's not super robust, mm -hmm. but it's really smooth. Pretty smooth. But if it's something that I really have to lift a lot yeah. then you know maybe something like voluma lift you know those kinds of things but they're gotcha. all hyaluronic acid fillers they're all reversible they're all adjustable and it's something that you know i i, I feel like we can uh fine tune it we can yeah. really fine tune it and those self-harm scars that get indented why do you think they get indented i mean there is it atrophy of fat soft tissue is it separation of the scar all the above well i think all the above. I don't yeah. know. It's hard. It's 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 hard to say. 
I mean, the majority, unfortunately, the majority of the ones that contact me are the one the razor blade scars, right. the multiple, multiple laser blades, and they're really thin, thin white lines. lines. Gotcha. And they're not indented, they're not raised, they're just there and they're just white. Okay. And um, I'm still thinking about how to how to help with those. There's some uh, some really smart dermatologists around who are working with skin of color. Cheryl Burgess. Most dermatologists are really smart. Anyway. Yeah, that's that's okay. true. <laughs> that's true. But it's particularly All right. All right. <laughs> these guys are particularly good at innovative ideas about skin of color. And so they're um, and so there's some immune modulatory agents. Okay. That I'm excited about trying with these kinds of white scars to repigment. So they use them for um, vitiligo. vitiligo. They yeah. use them for vitiligo, uh -huh. and it seems to work. So if, if it works for vitiligo, you know, repigmenting, maybe it'll work for these. That's pretty cool. So vitiligo, um, people usually know Michael Jackson, where there's a uh, discoloration uh, of your natural pigment, and it's thought to be due to an autoimmune disease. Basically, you attack your own body, and in this case, vitiligo, you attack your pigment cells, You so you attack your own melanin, so that's why your color changes. So the thought processes on these really smart dermatologists are that if we can adjust, tamper, bring down your immune response to your pigmented cells, maybe we can influence your body's reaction to the pigment in the scar. Right. So right. That's pretty cool. And so that's, we'll have to, we'll have to figure out how, how to make that work, whether mm -hmm. we do this purely topically or whether we do it with, and I'm thinking that probably with some sort of microneedling device, maybe it'll, yeah. it'll help to kind of drive it in. And microneedling and then topical, um, I think would probably be the better yeah. thing. Yeah. So, you know, I'm hoping, I'm yeah. hoping that that'll help. Because if that helps, if I can, if we can do that, that would be really, really That's amazing, that's yeah. amazing. Good, good, good. And then with your steroid injections for those raised scars, one, two, three injections, do you see a, a need for silicone, a topical silicone patches, compression therapy, or you just do the steroid I just injections? Do, I just the steroids and F5FU. Yeah, I just yeah. do the steroid injections themselves. Okay. I mean, I think that I vary the concentration. Okay. So sometimes it's a lower, I, I try to lower concentration first, because the one thing you, you don't want to do, you don't want to have with steroid injections is to over inject them to some degree, you know, to have too high of a concentration and therefore wind up with an indentation where you want it just for it to come down. But I mean, if I, I mean, the indentation is certainly better than a raised scar because sure. you can always fill it. You know, sure. so it's not that big a deal. But sure. still, you want to, you know, you, I want to start slow and then build up a little bit. Cool. Well, that's, uh, that's an amazing uh, sort of brand new feel that I didn't really know about. I didn't know it was out there, and I didn't know there was treatment for it. And now yeah. you have a whole network across the U.S. That's amazing. My uh, my son is in private school. Oh, okay, and great. He's we just started. Yeah. And um, but one of the other moms, um, I was just talking to her, and she runs rehab centers. So she oh. runs, uh, but uh, addiction rehab centers. Gotcha. And um, I was telling her about this SCAR initiative that we had, and she was very interested in that. And as we were discussing, um, she was thinking, this would be an interesting thing to offer people who are recovering and trying to start a new life after mm -hmm. addiction. Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh, you know, I, again, once again, you know, this is the interesting thing, right? People bring you ideas. Opportunities. I have yeah. never thought about that kind of thing. Yeah. And that sort of, I never, I haven't thought about that part of uh, how m the services that we do could mm -hmm. be integrated into something like that. Sure. Um, and so, but it makes sense. Yep. Because these are people that are, you know, recovering from addiction and people who are trying as hard as they possibly can to change their lives, to 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 start again, to start you know fresh. And addiction, you know, as, as we know, there's a lot of things with addiction. Self harm scars is certainly part of that. Yep. Um, in depression, you know, emotional kinds of uh, impacts, and you and and it takes a toll on you, on on the on the person, in in, in terms of just physically. Mm -hmm. it's sometimes and it leaves its marks. Sure, literally. Literally, literally you know. Yeah. And so, and she was saying, well, 
here's these people that are trying to do everything they can to kick the habit, but when they look in the mirror, they still see the marks, they still see the signs of their previous life. Sure. Sure. Wouldn't it be interesting to do some of the procedures that, that, that you do? So not talking about, so scars certainly is one thing, mm -hmm. but other things like, you know, Botox, fillers, making people feel, making people look refreshed, just helping with some of the stigmata sure, sure. of addiction, yeah. you know? Yeah, fitting more into the normal bell-shaped curve yeah. as much as you can as much as you yeah. can and but also and, and also just in terms of personally and individually looking in the mirror and and seeing a change for the positive yep yeah that's um, what it's about and that's what yeah. it's about and i thought yeah. gosh that's a great concept that's yeah. a really interesting thing and once again something that the possibility of which a lot of people struggling with addiction recovery probably don't know and the impact of which probably people struggling with addiction recovery don't understand yeah because they're just understandably so focused in on their kind of day-to-day -day, okay you know recreating their life and remaking their life sure. successful sure. so i thought so that's i thought that's, that's really cool, cool. We, as surgeons, we do a lot of things constructively, and it's not just sometimes the physical uh, things that we do, it's the emotional impact it has on patients. So right. sometimes, I'm sure you've experienced, sometimes we can do a little procedure on a patient, and it completely changes their life. Every day, it's amazing. Yeah, yeah. It's really remarkable. So know? just like, I don't know, maybe it's one cc or half a cc here, yeah. completely change someone's life, and approach and outlook. So yeah. it's pretty amazing. Can you talk about the importance of mental health and how you kind of contribute to your patients as far as mental health goes? You seem to really care about them as people, and that, that means so much. Sure. I mean, I think all of us in aesthetics, to some degree, are therapists. In mm -hmm. a way, True. You know? True. Uh, the thing we deal with every day is, is, is self-confidence, right? Yeah. So maybe we're physical therapists. There you go. <laughs> All right. <laughs> it's, it's funny that from what I see is that we don't necessarily have to solve everything. Mm -hmm. I've, you know what I mean? Right. It's people come in, for, from my standpoint, for example, people come in with a bunch of self-harm scars. And if I can just improve it, if mm -hmm. I can just make a difference, if I can just make some sort of um, some change, right? That's enough. Sure. You know, a lot of times that's enough to get them on the road to better self-acceptance. Sure. I don't it's know it's that. that perspective. Mm. So sometimes you know we're presented with a situation, and um, we think we don't correct it, but in the patient's eyes, which is the most important, mm. wow, everything's ninety-nine percent better. Mm. Whereas for surgeons, we're kind of like, you know, I wish I could have made it better. Uh, but for the patient, that's enough, yeah. and that's the most important thing. It's true because it's yeah. a, it's an, it's a situation where they thought there was no solution, or they thought mm. that they were stuck with this whatever it is for the rest of their lives, and then suddenly mm. somebody comes in and makes a change and makes some makes some improvement. Maybe not to our 100%. kind of you mm -hmm. know hundred percent, but uh, yeah, that's it's it's great that for them it's life changing still. Yeah. And and that's that's nice. That's really great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So one we need to get the word out there that, you know, there are these programs for these scars just like this. A lot of people don't even know this program exists or this technology exists. Yeah. So one, we gotta get the word out there that it's out there. And then two, there is treatment, um, and you just gotta seek a specialist. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Dr. Rivkin, what is your message for the people watching this, or the people of the world? Uh, what is your message <laughs> to the world? To the world? Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out a way to express this that's not cliched, but really, it's it's a, it's a it's a very old message, which is that you deserve to love yourself, and that the past does not define the future. You know, and so knowing yourself and understanding yourself is a journey that it's incumbent for, for all of us to take, for us here, as well as for everybody out there as well. And understanding the options 
available and how to and what what are the things that sort of trigger you what are the things that that remind you of things that of of the past that that needs to be put away um and how what do you what do you do about that i think is is important um because it impacts so much of your of your life and it's everybody no matter what deserves you know, de deserves the best and deserves to love yourself because, you know, you're all you've got and you, you were just go around one time, you know. And so be good to yourself and figure out ways that make it easier for you to, to be good to yourself. So that's, I think. That's a really good message. <laughs> that's a really good message. Yeah. Do you want to add to that message? Or do you no, I think, that, I mean, that's, uh, if everybody could do that, I think the world would be a much better place. Much better place, yeah. indeed. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if that only impacts one person, that would be amazing, but two would be even more. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. yeah, just if everybody could uh, appreciate themselves and give themselves the benefit of the doubt and uh, try to better themselves in any way possible. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Always possible. Yeah, I think, I yeah, it's very important, uh, you know, what effect you can have on others you know you may not consider it uh, to be impactful on somebody else's life what you say or comment or even a look on another person so just at the end of the day like they always say in preschool be nice to others <laughs> especially in the age we're growing up in with so much technology it's easy to hide behind your phone in the comments and say mean things we see mean comments all the time yeah and yeah. that could really hurt someone's feelings in a way that means a lot more to them than you even know yeah that's that's very true in this uh, age of technology it's very easy to just uh, post a cruel comments or uh, nasty emoji or right. just uh, some flippant right. like that where you're not e you don't even know the person on the other end you won't see them you won't interact but you want to express a negative emotion right so just be nice end of the day be nice but these two things really uh, link up together because it's a lot easier to be nice when you're nice to yourself true when you first love yourself it's a lot easier to love others and it's something that I mean, you know, it's 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 an obvious point, mm -hmm. but it's something that I've really only as I've gotten as I've gotten older have I really appreciated that. So and yeah, I mean, it's true. You know, you're behind a screen, you're the alone in your room, you you type whatever you want, but these are never things that you would say to somebody to their face because. You know, as human beings, we just have an we we have an instinct that when another human being is is there, we have some empathy that we don't sure. have to a screen. Sure. So. So thank you, Dr. Rifkin, for coming. Oh, I really appreciate it. My pleasure. And uh, you do a lot of uh, amazing work, and uh, we'd love for people to know about what you do. And uh, if you have uh, issues, come visit you. Excellent. Good. I'd, I'd welcome it. Thank you so much for having me. Sure. It's been a real pleasure. And now. Now I know who to send the patients that these these kinds of patients to. These well, thank the, the you patients that are recovering from weight loss. That's, well, thank that's you. phenomenal. Well, thank you. And uh, again, uh, if you're looking for what to do about self-harm scars, Dr. Rivkin's your expert. All righty. Okay. Well, you guys have a great day, and we'll see you guys next time on Plastic great. Surgery 902NL. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks.